Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's your main man, AV the Hero, back again with a, another video. Hey, and we on a little bit of a streak, you feel me, today. But uh, we got to get into something here, man. I've been wanting to kind of talk about this for a minute, you know what I'm saying? And I was trying to connect the dots for y'all, but I figured I finally figured out how we could get here. Uh, shout out to my boys, DKM, Riding Hughes. Y'all y'all riding here for the live show as well. So uh, um, let's get into this. So in a in today's video what we're going to talk about is the young Lamelo ball in comparison with the hottest rapper out right now six nine i'll say the most controversial rapper out right now um allegedly the king of new york all of these other things and i think that we were talking about him in in conjunction with somebody who i determined to be the hottest Hooper out, period, right now, is LaMelo Ball. So they have those two core values together of just being the, the, the kind of kings of clout in their own arenas. Now, I will say that where this video idea originated from is uh, my guy, Ball Facts, okay? So he had a video um, on his channel that, that went live yesterday and where he was making a comparison between 6 9 and LiAngelo Ball and I feel like folks didn't really understand what he was saying because I believe that the the comparison that he was trying to make or at least the comparison that folks felt like he was trying to make was LiAngelo Ball and his um his issue that he had in China in comparison to 6 9 coming out of jail and then what their trajectories look like post um, their run-ins with the law. Now, I don't think that that's a fair comparison to make, and I feel like a lot of people didn't, on the fact that LiAngelo Balls, um, his issue was 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 not as egregious as what people uh, determined um, 6 ix 9s issue to be. But I do believe that the young man Ball Facts, while he was in the right ballpark, there is a comparison to be had, and I think that he was just off by one brother, with that one brother being um, LaMelo Ball, not LiAngelo Ball. Let's get into it. All right, so now, how I, how I think that I would like for you all to, to understand this, because I realize this could be a controversial topic, you know what I'm saying? You take a dude like LaMelo Ball, who is a hooper, has done everything right. The comparison is not on the, the characteristics of the two people, but I believe the comparison is that the way that the the system has affected these two people, right? And where I think that... 6 9 can learn from LaMelo Ball is the way that he's been able to navigate through said system and then bounce back. Now, what I was saying to you all is, if you think about clout and if you think about what LaMelo Ball does and, and what clout, how clout affects these two different people's career is, we all understand that being the hottest or being the the most clout doesn't mean that you are the best, right? It doesn't mean that you just because more than 90 million people watch your video don't mean that you're the greatest rapper out. It just means that when you make a move, people click on it. Now, we believe and I believe that Amelo is is probably one of the best basketball players in this upcoming draft. I believe he's a top three pick. Um, but also I believe that he has the clout to go with it. That is example by when he make a move to Lithuania, all of a sudden the the, the folks over there at v, BC Vitotas who had maybe a hundred subs, now they got um, 10,000 uh, followers and all of those things on Facebook. We seen the numbers on the Facebook live streams go crazy. We seen the NBL numbers go crazy. We seen the LaMelo Ball effect. That is also the same thing that you see with 6 9 He come home and the shit just start to go crazy. If he touch it, he hit for hit for hit. So it's a clout thing, right? That's where the clout is. It's not a comparison between the talents and abilities because in order for 6 9 to compare basketball-wise to rapping-wise, then he would have to be damn near on the level of, like, let's say, a Jay-Z. So let me give y'all this. All right. Now... What I want to say is that when I say like the social constructs, right? If you go back to this point, LaMelo 
was in high school, left high school, right? As when he was in high school, top five player in the country. Left high school because he got into some things with the coach. Folks said it wasn't a great idea. Went to Lithuania. At that time, you seen all of the scouting reports. Everybody pulled him off. He uh, went when he he went from being a top five player to being a player who was not ranked in in the top 100 anymore, right? So everybody got rid of him. They said, "Yo, he did that." And you talk to folks, and they had critiques on him. They didn't necessarily have critiques on his game, but they had critiques on the way that scouts perceived his game. That was going to end up being his biggest hurdle. Now, I think that when you look at from the other perspective, you look at the six nine dude. He go to jail. Um, folks believe that yo, when he come back from jail, it's over. He's not gonna be able to rap. Not gonna be able to make these different moves. He come back. The hype is there. The cloud is still there. Same thing I feel like happened with Lamelo. He went away to Lithuania. Folks felt like his, some shit was gonna die off. At this point, right now, we see him getting ready to be probably the first pick in this NBA draft. All right. So now let me. I got my notes here, man, because I I need to get y'all this game here effectively. And also, you know, what I'm saying this that Slytherin book. You feel me? That's where y'all know. So y'all know where I'm coming from with it. You feel me? So uh. Now, what I'm saying is, what we've seen is, so so you see the, the outside comparison from folks like uh, trying to tell Melo, you know what, man, you, you're not going to be able to make it, you, you're off the charts and all of this stuff. Now, well, I think that you start to see the moves that Melo makes, and then he comes back, ends up at Spire. I've said this to folks a bunch of times. The Spire thing was not because the JBA wasn't working as a league or people wasn't looking at it. It's because they realized that the system was then trying to create a place where he wasn't going to be able to do it. So they had to make another move in order to get him back on the radar of the system, right? Now, here's what I'm saying to you is that you realize when Melo came back, what happened? Folks said to him, Oh, no, we're not going to play against your team. Why? Because you're a professional athlete, right? So then you get into this ideal of professionalism and amateurism, right? Which to me is all just made up constructs that, that really don't mean anything. Because the ideal that you may be a better player because you actually got paid to play is 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 false right because if you go through and you watch guys like cole anthony who spend a lot of time playing with professional athletes right but still maintain their amateurism because they're not being paid to play but it's also probably what allowed him to be as successful as he was right so it's the ideal of like it's a false it's a false thing like you, you, you we're not going to play against you we're going to cash cash we're going to uh let me see my boy DK. I'm saying ball, bro. Equal Migos, Lamelo, Lonzo, or Quavo, all set. The two stars, the Jello, Takeoff, who is solid but not got the same star power as the other two. I like that comparison if you're trying to compare them to rappers for sure. But let's see. Um, so then I think that, and this is one of the, the takes that that when folks get to talking about 6 9 that that always make me go home is right when you think about the ideal of like let's say snitching or like street culture right so to me there's a parallel between that between a professional basketball player amateurism and snitching and then street culture right because street culture is not a it's not a real thing it's some shit that folks make up right so it's a thing that that you have to accept your way into you have to be you have to make a decision to remain an amateur basketball player if you decide to go pro the well, same thing that we've seen with Lamelo when folks didn't want to play against him when folks didn't want him to play in the All American game McDonald's All American game the Jordan Brand game because because he was a, a professional athlete and it was going to affect the way that other people looked at them. I think you see that same thing in hip hop with the 6 9 kid where then folks say, ah, I'm not going to rap with him because then people are going to look at me like I'm crazy. I think that th those are some comparisons there. I think that when you think about um, street culture and let's say snitching, for instance, um, I think that what I find interesting and I find that the kind of duality in there is that there's this ideal that, yo, it's okay to snitch if you are a casual citizen, right? But we all know that snitches get stitches and nobody ever likes a tattletale. And we also know that in history, 
if you are a civilian and you decide that you're going to tell on people, they're probably coming after you regardless of whether or not you involved in that anyway. So it's the same thing. It's the idea of that folks have put in place in order to kind of control you so you don't tell on them. And that's the same thing that we've seen in basketball with amateurism and professionalism where you have folks like the NCAA trying to control the situation and where we don't have to give you money because if you take some money from us, then you can't be here anyway. So you eliminate yourself, right? And then so it's that whole narrative where it's just a loop, where it's a, it's a construct and uh, uh, <laughs> but so so uh, I think that that's the, the point that I want to make with the, the whole thing, right? Is like if you think about, let's say, ratting and snitching and what street culture is, the, the whole ideal is that it's more acceptable for you to beat somebody up kill somebody or hurt somebody than it is to tell on them right so instead of and then so people make this excuse of like yo you're taking people away from your family when all of these dudes the whole cycle of street culture is taking people away from their family the end of it and the beginning of it is always um you hear this all the time you either die or you end up in jail that's where street culture takes you right and so, so I, that's, that's a side note. I could go on that tangent all day because, like I've said on this channel before, I have kind of worked with kids for the better part of my professional career, and we have had these conversations about the myths behind street culture and all of that. And I realized that there was a parallel between some of the myths that I would have people on this channel about professional um being a professional athlete and amateurism and how a lot of those constructs are just set up in order to keep people in power so they can make money off guys who don't have the power. And I think that one of the best things that we've seen from the big baller brand and when we start talking about what this dude 6 9 can learn from LaMelo Ball is that you have to be willing to work and live outside of a system, right? And then once you get outside of said system, you have to be able to show so much value that you force the system to change, right? And you have to accept the fact that they will not change because you, and they won't give you the credit for that change, but what they will do is make a change for somebody else, and then you will have to benefit from it, but only the real ones will know what, what the real deal is, you know what I'm saying? And so, so I, I, I feel like that's a... This is my, what is it, Thursday? I might come up with a reach Thursday, you feel me? But now, I'm going to say this. If you're watching this and you hear some cap, let me know. Throw some caps in the uh, comments section, you know what I'm saying? Let me know where I'm capping at. But I think that there's no true comparison between the character of those two dudes. But I do think that we've seen the system and we've seen the um, the fans or the people be split um when talking about LaMelo Ball in a way that we've seen them po be polarized with a guy like uh um Takashi 69 who his whole thing right now is trying to get the regular everyday people to understand how foolish sometimes the street culture can come across as and how loyalty and all of these things um operate and then we've seen that with uh the Ball family over and over again where you look at Jello Ball at UCLA commitment to UCLA. They've been supposed to go to UCLA for years and then they get on campus, they make one mistake and then UCLA says, you know what, now you can't play anymore even though you did your time in, in uh, the Chinese jail, all of these things. And so we allow the system all of the time to control when you're allowed to be loyal, when you're not allowed to be loyal, when you can leave, when you can stay, who can give you money, who can't give you money. But then there's a reality is that the people actually hold the power. And so when you take a LaMelo ball and then he goes to Lithuania and the people show up, that's taking back some power. You take a LaMelo ball and you bring him here and travel across the country and the folks show up from here in our own country, that's taking back some power. Then you take LaMelo ball, you put him in high school, you take him and go to the Australia and the people continue to show up. It shows you that the power is actually in the people and then the power is not in the system anymore. So then what happens is the system has to change to adapt to a, a, a place where people actually have the power. You feel me? And I think that 
if I was to talk to 6ix9ine, right, and I was to tell him that, yo, you are in a in a space right now where the establishment is trying to tell you that you did all of the wrong things and you probably did a bunch of terrible things, right? And and I think that my mission and passion, the reason why I even started talking about this is to preach the idea that we all make mistakes and that just because you made a mistake doesn't mean that you can't correct course and do the right thing. I would tell him that if you are in a position in which you feel like you're ready to correct course and do the right thing, you have to follow the road of LaMelo Ball. Because LaMelo Ball, I don't believe that he made a mistake or did something wrong, but I believe that the system has consistently said that he made mistakes and did things wrong. You've seen that in the Jeff Goodman interview where Jeff Goodman says, I believe that LeVar made all these terrible decisions. I made all of these things like this. And then we see LaMelo Ball still, regardless of that, end up being probably being the first pick in this year's upcoming NBA draft. And so I would tell this young kid, 6'9", like, yo, if you're going to operate, you have to be willing to give up um, the, the shiny car that is UCLA. You have to be willing to give up the McDonald's All-American game. You have to be willing to give up March Madness and all of those things. But at the end of the day, you'll end up on top because you will show the powers that be that the clout, the talent, and the skill will always outweigh the bullshit in the eyes of the people. Now, that that's my take. I hope that I got y'all to where I was trying to get y'all to go. And I will say that there is some more um, like comparisons and, and obvious moves that we've seen LaMelo make as far as what his team looks like. Some of the additions of, of getting a mentor, you've seen that in Jermaine Jackson. Um, and you've seen that that addition and having somebody who seems to be a solid dude helping you direct and also helping you create a space where you can be yourself has been beneficial. We've seen the also the addition of the establishment such as like a Rock Nation and the Jay-Zs and the Pumas start to embrace that, which will then probably provide some more um, uh, clout and also power to the Mellow Ball and the Big Baller brand. And uh, so I think that the other kid will have to make those same adjustments and find those same people in order to provide that... Um, that bit of power and clout to his situation as well. But um, I think that LaMelo Ball should be the role model for 6ix9ine in this current situation. And he should just be looking at him as, as yo, let me just do what you did. Let me take ownership of my own life. And so when folks throw the fact that, yo, you a snitch and you a rat and all of that shit, you ain't, uh, you already went pro, you can't play here, you, uh, yeah, you was taking bad shots, all of these different things that they throw at LaMelo, you will have a, the power to deflect those things, but, Shemay Man, A.B. the Hero, that's what I got for y'all today, I'm out, peace, but, actually, before I go, if I want to engage a little bit with the folks who live in here with your boy right now, tell me what y'all think, am I capping? Do you understand what I'm trying to, to, to bring you along for, or am I on that BS right now? Let me know in the uh, live chat. Also, if you're watching this video on the playback, drop that in the comment section. Throw the caps in there. If, if I'm capping, <laughs> then I'm going I'm to get a cap counter. And then when we come back for the next video, we'll address some of the things that I might have been capping on or I might have missed. You feel me? But uh, let me see. Let's see. Cream he A Z says we comparing Melo to rats now. Stop disrespecting future Knicks like that, my guy. Ball facts was good. Um, I don't believe that I'm that that is a that's a ideal that this is disrespecting or really comparing the two. You know what I'm saying? I just think that there is a lot from one of those dudes that he could learn from the other one, and it would be. Uh, I'd be uh, doing a disservice to humanity not to point out these steps in, in which folks could learn from and, you know what I'm saying, and benefit in that type of way. You feel me? But uh, let's see. People can't take the facts. You're right. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's why folks like here, that's here, like me and my man Ball Facts, because we got to give you those things. You feel me? But, uh, yeah, we're going to get up off here, man. While y'all in here, make sure y'all like. Uh, comment down below and uh, share this video and, and let me know what you think. Hit me up on the uh, 
you were speaking that real. It's going over their heads, though. Hey, that, if it wasn't going over their heads, then, then I was telling them things that they already knew. I see where you're trying to go, but you wild at me. <laughs> yeah, straight up. There we go. Hey, Rodney, man, you we got to I got to get you back on here. The last time you was on the channel, we did the uh the live stream in which we actually talked about the 6ix9ine situation many moons ago. So we got to do a follow-up on that. And I really was going to get you back on here for that, you know what I'm saying? So we can have that conversation. But uh we'll do that uh on another date. But like I said, man, for real this time it's your main man, AVD Hero.